may adlaw na tong tanan. If you had a stroke and you want to be consistent with your therapy and recovery, but you don't know what to do yet, then you need to watch this video. Hi, I'm Nathan. I'm your occupational therapist, and my goal is to help you be more consistent with your therapy at home. Having a stroke can be very devastating because it will affect your movements, which will result to you having difficulty doing your day-to-day -day activities. But before planning or doing your therapy at home, you need to know what stage of stroke you are in. And clinicians use the Brunstrom approach. In this video, I am going to teach you on how to identify the stage of stroke you are in and the primary goals for each stage. So if you're ready, let's get started. Before we start, this video is for educational purposes and it will not replace the necessity of you going to your doctor or your therapist to identify the best approach or the best treatment plan for you. All right, the first stage is flaccidity. This usually happens immediately after the stroke. Flaccidity is when your arm or that side that you had the stroke or the side that is affected is floppy. It doesn't have any control. Sometimes it doesn't even have that sensation. All right. So when you move your arm or your leg, it just flails around. It just goes everywhere. Okay. And the main goal for this stage is to make sure that the muscles don't atrophy or shrink. So you need to be moving that arm stretching that arm but do not go past where you might feel a dislocation or pain so you need to extend or flex your shoulder extend your shoulder bend your elbow and extend your elbow and then your wrist and hands you make sure that you are getting that blood flowing and another one that you really need to Make sure is that you have a sling to support that arm when you are walking around. Or when you're just sitting, you need to prep that arm so that the shoulder will not dislocate. It will have a lot of weakness in the shoulder and the muscles that is supporting that arm towards the shoulder is going to be atrophying or it will be shrinking. So make sure that the shoulder is still intact by using a sling or propping them up when you are sitting down or even sleeping. Stage two is when spasticity appears or muscle tone is starting to appear. So when you move that arm quickly, there might be a catch towards the end. And the goal is gentle, active or passive stretching and movement. In order for the spasticity to be controlled a little bit, we don't want that spasticity, spasticity to get any worse. So make sure that you're moving your shoulder towards flexion, extension, pushing forward, pulling back, elbow flexion and extension, wrist movement and hand movement. If you don't have those yet, just passively move those areas so that spasticity do not get any worse. All right. So gentle, passive, or active movement. Stage three is when muscle tone or spasticity is increasing. So when you move that arm, there might be a little bit more muscle tone or resistance there. Now the goal for this stage is going to be, again, active and passive movements, but more conscious effort. So always visualize the movement that you want. So reaching up. So we're always going to start from the top going to your wrist and hand. So move your arm with more conscious effort, okay? Move your elbow. Do not forget the elbow or rather the forearm turning, pushing and pulling. You can also start going sliding on the table. If you have a small skateboard, you're going to just push and pull, you go side to side, okay? So again, for stage three, the goal is more active or passive movements, or you add active and passive movements with more conscious effort. 
Stage four is decreased spasticity, meaning you have more controlled movements and you're veering off from the more abnormal pattern. So instead of going this way, when you're trying to move your arm, you're able to even move your elbow towards your nose or towards your mouth when you are trying to eat or when you're picking up a cup or your water bottle. You are able to go this way and starting to move that hand towards your mouth or your nose. Or if you want to scratch your head, that's one of the things that you will miss when you are when you have a stroke is being able to scratch or brush your hair from that side where you have the stroke. So the goal for this stage is introducing more complex and more controlled movements. All right, so practice doing this, picking up a water bottle or trying to flex your elbow, extend your elbow, punch forward, pu uh, pull your arm back, even trying to open your hand. Again, if you have difficulty with hand movements, the most difficult part is opening the hand. That's usually what we see in the clinics or when we do their ter therapy at home, all right? So try to introduce more complex and voluntary movements and activities. Stage five is when complex movement returns. So you have more control with your movement and more complex movements are beginning to emerge. So instead of just pushing and pulling just that, you're able to control the movement of your elbow, even pronate or bring your forearm facing down or bring your forearm and hand facing up. You have those movements now. And when you are drinking your water, stage four is this, maybe stage five is this. You're not bringing that elbow up anymore. So stage five, controlled, more controlled movements. So introduce a more complex task, which is drinking or handling a spoon or a fork. You might start doing this, even moving your wrist. So goal for stage five, introduce more complex activities and exercises. Stage six is when spasticity disappears. So joint movements are possible. Most of your joints are beginning to move or moving much, much better. And you have finer movements, finer motor control for your hand. You begin to move your hands and fingers much better. So the goal for this is more functional movements. The goal for this stage is more functional movements, such as picking up a smaller object, maybe a pen, a smaller ball, or even your spoon and fork and begin to turn your arm or your hand when you feed yourself and when you brush your hair, you're able to really follow the shape of your head when you're brushing your hair and you're able to individually move your fingers with better, much, much better motor control. So this stage, introduce more complex, a lot more complex movements, even picking up coins. That will be a good activity for you in this stage. Stage seven is when normal function returns. In this stage, you will have near normal movements. So meaning even your fingers are able to move individually and you are able to perform most tasks, including maybe using a flip phone and finding those buttons or picking up a smaller coin or smaller objects such as a bobby pin. If you use a bobby pin, you're able to maneuver and pull that bobby pin apart and put it on your hair or even use um, your remote. That's very important for some of you guys or even tying your shoelaces. So at this stage, continue performing your day-to-day -day activities, your normal day-to-day -day activities with both hands. Another thing that's also difficult to do with just one hand is buttoning your shirt. So at this stage, you're able to do most tasks with less difficulty. So those are the stages, the Brunstrom stages that clinicians use 
when they identify or make a plan for a stroke patient. So try to identify your stroke stage, your Brunstrom, using the Brunstrom approach and talk to your clinicians, be proactive with your treatment plan and you will have more success in your recovery journey. Now for the attendance check, type down below road to recovery plus your stage of stroke. So again, the road, type down below road to recovery and then the stage of your stroke. Now, if you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, just type it down below in the comments section. I'm also going to leave a link for the exercises for almost all of the stages of recovery for stroke. Down below, I'll leave those links. And if you know of anybody who will benefit from this video, please share it to them. And if you have not already, please click on that subscribe button so that we will be able to help more people who had a stroke or is still recovering from a stroke. And just a reminder, consistency is the key and never give up. Until next time, paalam! Shoop!